Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about the area of kites and regular polygons. They're somewhat uh, not exactly on the same line of thinking. However, just because the area of kites lesson is so short, I wanted to combine uh, both discussion on area of kites and the regular polygons. So first, we're going to talk about kites. Let's step back a second and talk about the properties of kites. Again, as you'll recall from chapter 5 on the properties of quadrilaterals. Properties of kites, I have two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. So I have AB here that is going to be congruent to AC. And I also have AD congruent to uh, DC. So two disjoint <clears throat> pair of consecutive sides congruent AB congruent to AC and AD congruent to uh, CD. Diagonals are going to be perpendicular as shown, so AC is perpendicular to BD. So I write AC uh, perpendicular to uh, BD. Uh, one diagonal is a perpendicular bisector of the other, so I know that uh, we'll make four dashes here and we'll call this intersection point O. I know that AO is going to be congruent to AC. One of the diagonals bisects a pair of opposite angles. So we'll say in this case ABO is congruent to CBO and ADO is congruent to CDO. And then one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So in this case we're going to say ABC is going to be congruent to CDA. <clears throat> Excuse me, BAD is going to be congruent to BCD. So uh, angle ABC and ADC don't necessarily have to be congruent. And you can see I've identified them as being not necessarily congruent in the diagram. But uh, angle BAD and angle BCD will be congruent. So the angles that are not being bisected are the angles uh, that are going to be congruent. So once again, two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular. One diagonal is a perpendicular bisector of the other. So AO is congruent to CO. Uh, one of the diagonals bisects a pair of opposite angles. So I know that angle ABO is congruent to angle CBO. And I know that angle ADO is congruent to angle CDO. And then finally, one pair of opposite angles are congruent. Uh, angle BAD is congruent to angle BCD. All right, moving on. Uh, proving a quadrilateral is a kite. Uh, very shortly and simply, two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides of a quadrilateral are congruent. Then it is a kite. So again, I'm marking up the figure. I have two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides congruent, then I know it's a kite. If only one of the diagonals is a perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal, then uh, the quadrilateral is a kite. If I have two diagonals that are both perpendicular bisectors, then I have another uh, figure that is not a kite. All right, so let me just draw this here. I have one diagonal that's a perpendicular bisector of the other. I'll make this three dashes, and I put my right angle here. So I know now that it's a kite. All right, so let's talk about the area of a kite. The area of a kite is equal to 1 half of one diagonal times the other diagonal. So this would be D1 times D2, where D1 is equal to diagonal 1 and D2 is equal to diagonal 2. So how do we figure out that that's the case? Well, I'm going to say I recall the uh, formula for the area of a triangle. And that's going to be 1 half of the base times the height. So in this case, uh, the area of the top triangle is going to be 1 half of AC, the height, times the base BD. The area of BD, or the bottom triangle, is going to be 1 half of the height, which is CE, or EC, times the base BD. So I can say that the area of this entire quadrilateral, AB, ED, is going to be equal to the sum of the two triangles, ABD and BDE. Well, if ABD is 1 half of AC times BD, and uh, BDE is 1 half of EC times BD, then the area of ABED is equal to the sum of those two, which is 1 half of AC plus 
EC, one half of AC plus CE times BD, which is in reality one half of diagonal one, AC uh, plus CE is going to be actually diagonal two times BD, which is diagonal one. All right, and that's how we get the formula for the area of a kite. So first, we showed that uh, what the area is in terms of uh, the points given in the two different triangles. We showed that the sum of the area of the two triangles equals the area of the kite. And then we use substitution for the values to determine that the diagonals, uh, the product of the diagonals times one half is equal to the area of the kite. All right, which leads us to uh, talking about polygons. So now that we're done with the kites, Let's talk about uh, theorem 106, which is the area of an equilateral triangle equals a product of one-fourth uh, the square of a side of the square root of three. So the area of an equilateral triangle, right? So I have an equilateral triangle here. All the angle measures are 60 degrees. And I uh, have created a, an altitude from this vertex down to the base of this triangle. And in doing so, I've created a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I have congruent sides. And I'm going to identify the sides as S. And I had to draw a little line through the S to make it look like a dollar sign almost, just because sometimes S's look like fives. So I know that the area of an equilateral triangle is the side squared divided by 4 times the square root of 3. So let's just put that in here, uh, where S is the length of a side. Well, I know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So 1 half base times height. And again, I said that the uh, base is going to be equal to S. All sides are congruent in an equilateral triangle. So now I have uh, 1 half of a base. Uh, and we've identified this base here as S2. So it's really 1 half of S, 2S times 2, times S root 3 over 2. And how did I get S root 3 over 2? Well, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle on both sides. I know that half of the base is S over 2. Since the entire base length is S, half of it is S2. I know that the S2 length corresponds to this uh, angle measure, which is 30 degrees. So it's the side opposite the 30 degree angle in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The side opposite the 60 degree angle is S root 2 times 3, if we remember our special families of right triangles, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. So my altitude is going to be s root 3 over 2. So I can say that 1 half base times height is going to be 1 half of s times the height, which is s root 3 over 2, which leaves me with 2s squared. So 2s squared root 3 uh, divided by 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Uh, I have a common factor in both the numerator and denominator is 2. I factor out that 2, and I'm left with s squared root 3 over 4. So theorem 106, the area of an equilateral triangle equals the product of 1 fourth of the square of a side and the square root of 3. All right, moving on, talk a little bit more about polygons. Uh, just some basics of regular polygons. First, all the interior angles are going to be congruent. So let's mark that up. All the interior angles are congruent. All the sides are congruent. Still marking this up. So all my sides are congruent. The sum of the interior angle measures, and this was from a prior chapter again, is going to be the sides minus 2 times 180. So in this case, I have a hexagon. It would be 6 minus 2, or 4, times 180, which gives me uh, all the, the sum of the interior angles being equal to 720. The measure of each interior angle, then, is 720 divided by the number of angles, which is equal to the number of sides, or 6. So in this case, each interior angle in a hexagon, a regular hexagon, is 120. The center is a point which is equidistant from all the vertices. So the center is a point which is equidistant from all the uh, vertices. The radius is the distance from the center to the vertex. The apothem is the distance from the center to a side. And it's going to form a right angle uh, with that side. And the vertex is a point of intersection of the two sides. All right, so some things to know about uh, radii and apothems. First, all apothems of a regular polygon are congruent. Uh, and by the way, only regular polygons have apothems. All right, so here are my apothems. And let me just draw one angle, right angle here. And that tells me that uh, I have an apothem and that all the apothems are congruent in this regular polygon. 
Second, an apothem is a radius of a circle inscribed in a polygon. So if I have a regular polygon, I inscribe a circle in that polygon, that radius ends up being the apothem of the polygon. Number three, apothems are perpendicular bisectors of the corresponding sides of the regular uh, polygon. So not only do they form right angles, but they also bisect the opposite side. Four, a radius of a regular polygon is a radius of a circle circumscribed by the polygon. So my red circle here, I have my uh, radius of that circle uh, is going to be the radius of the polygon itself circumscribed about the polygon. So remember the radius or the radii are also congruent here. So I'll mark this up accordingly. And uh, radius of a polygon also, and this should be number five, a radius of a regular polygon bisects the respective angle of the polygon. So all the bisected angles uh, are going to be congruent. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine. And I'm thinking that I missed another one, 10. So there we go, 10 angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 angles. They're all congruent uh, because they're bisected by the radius of the polygon. So let's go through those characteristics again uh, real quickly. So apothems uh, of a regular polygon are congruent. Uh, an apothem is a radius of a circle inscribed, and it's misspelled. That's OK. Uh, an apothem is a radius of a circle inscribed in a polygon. Apothems are perpendicular bisectors of the corresponding sides of the regular polygon. A radius of a regular polygon is a radius of a circle circumscribed about the polygon. And then five, a radius of a regular polygon bisects the respective angle of that polygon. Okay, so this brings us to our final and last theorem, which is that the area of a regular polygon equals one half the product of the apothem and the perimeter. So I want you to think about how we might come up with this particular formula. So again, area of a polygon, regular polygon, is equal to one half the apothem times the perimeter. And I want you to think about uh, what uh, other formula is similar to one half of one value times the other. And then let's talk about uh, what I think uh, and what uh, is actually proven. And the, if you think about it, the area of a regular polygon, one half apothem times perimeter, is very similar to the area of a triangle, one half of the base times the height. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of triangles in this polygon, this pentagon. And the triangles are all going to be congruent. And how do I know that they're congruent? Well, I know that the uh, radius, the radii of a regular polygon, and we've defined this as a regular polygon, are going to be congruent. So I have all of the radii identified as congruent. And then I know all the sides of a regular polygon are congruent uh, by definition. So by side, 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 I have uh, one, two, three, four, five triangles that are all congruent. They all have the same side. They all uh, have the same uh, length of, uh, of a radius. So I can say then that the apothem uh, here is going to be the same, or really the altitude are going to be the same for all of the triangles. So now I have a set of five triangles, really. And if I wanted to find out the uh, area for each of these triangles, what I do is I would multiply 1 half base times height. Let's just redraw that 1 half of the base times the height times 5. All right, so let's see how we can come up with the area of a regular polygon using this formula. So I have five triangles, area of each triangle is 1 half base times height. Well, the height of each triangle is going to be the apothem. So let's just replace uh, the height with the apothem. So now I have 1 half of the apothem. And the base times 5, right, if I have a base, here is base 1, here is another base. The bases are just the sides of the polygon. So what I end up getting is 5 times the base as my perimeter, which is equal to the perimeter of the polygon. So my formula ends up as 1 half, if 
by substitution as I substitute P for 5B, one half of the apothem, which is just the altitude of a triangle, times the perimeter, which is uh, just the number of bases that I have in the regular polygon. Okay, so just as a quick review, we're going to talk about the uh, area of a kite. And the area of a kite, as you recall, is equal to 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2, or the product of the two diagonals. Then the area of an equilateral triangle ends up being s squared divided by 4 times the square root of 3. Then we recall the properties of the uh, uh, radii of regular polygons and apothems of regular polygons. So again, apothem is a radius of a circle inscribed in a polygon. Apothems are perpendicular bisectors of corresponding sides of a regular polygon. Radius of a po regular polygon is a radius of a circle circumscribed about the polygon. And five, a radius of a regular polygon bisects the respective angle of the polygon. And then we use this information about polygons uh, and the area of uh, triangles to determine the area of a regular polygon, which is just one half of the apothem times the perimeter of that given polygon. All right, that's it for Otten Math. Thanks for joining. Come and join us. I know we uh, went through a lot of information, but I wanted to combine kites and regular polygons. And you can check out uh, the practice problems for both of these sections in the next edition of Otten Math.